Right, this week we're going to do the Hang 10 360 Shove It. Now, normally I have a strict rule when I'm doing these. There's no point me doing a trick tip if you're missing something beforehand. You know, as an example, be like me doing an ollie finger flip trick tip without explaining first how to do regular finger flips. What sort of idiot would do that? So, it might seem odd that I'm jumping straight ahead to 360 Hang 10 Shoves. There's a good reason for that. The 181 isn't really a shove it, it's basically just an, an unwinding of the feet and it just turns the board as you do it. So the 361 is probably the first time a Hangton shove it becomes a real shove it. It's also probably easier than regular 360 shove its, certainly easier than frontside 360 shove its, because half of the spin is already done for you as you bring your body back to a normal riding position. This is where you want your feet to be for a Hangton 360 shove it. The actual position of your feet, i.e. how far they are towards the end of the nose, is going to vary depending on nose length and kicktail angle. However, it's important that both feet are perfectly straight, pointing forwards and right next to each other. If one's in front or behind, it'll make the spin unstable. And if your feet are at an angle, you're not going to get the whip to get it all the way around. The mechanics of the shove it are pretty straightforward. Like a regular backside shove it, the whole trick works by dipping the toes and flicking the ankle outwards starting the rotation. Obviously the difference with this is you've not got your back foot to kick the board around. So both feet have to work in unison. They can't be out of sync. Both have to dip the toes at the same time and then you flick both ankles outwards. So it's a full body rotation to get it whipping into the shove it. Because of the fact both feet have to work in unison, your upper body is also really important. You've got to make sure you pre-wind in the opposite direction to the spin so that then you can compress and unwind as you jump to generate the rotation. Now, which way you spin it doesn't really matter. As a regular footed skater, I tend to find that I want to fling it that way, going backside. Most people, I'd imagine, would feel the same, but play around. One way will feel much easier than the other, and it doesn't matter which one you choose. The most important part of this trick is the takeoff. Most people, when they start doing this, they'll lean backwards slightly, and when that happens, the board pushes out in front of you. You've got to make sure you keep your head down, not too much, just a little bit, keep your weight slightly forward. And also remember, you've got to jump forward to meet the board as it spins. So as you dip your toes, press off and launch that way. Don't worry about the board. As long as your weight's slightly forward, it should come with you. You really don't have to whip it very hard and it's rare that you'll get the full 360 all the way around. What tends to happen is you will bring it round and your legs will come back to meet it and catch it slightly short catching it on the back wheels and winding round to finish the trick. If you're doing it that way, that tends to result in the smoothest roll away. Like most of it, you're going to need a bit of forward rolling speed in order to get the rotation. But the big problem is, this trick is completely behind you up until the last second. So it can be somewhat scary to do. You've just got to have faith that the board's going to be there when you land. Once you've got this one down, you can try it from a hang-ten nose wheelie. The technique is fundamentally the same. The only difference is because your feet are already angled, your toes are already dipped, all you've got to do is jump off that balance point and throw your heels out to the side. It really won't take much to whip because the back wheels are already up in the air. 